All right, we're back. First race of the season. Let's give it a watch. This is not so much of a live race watch along, but we're going to watch it. Let's go. 11 laps later. Verstappen going slowly, and as he lost power, and he's desperately trying to get power back into that Red Bull. 40 laps later. What's happened here to the Williams? Russell was having a very nice race indeed, going along in 12th place. Uh, four laps later. Yeah, oh, it's already. The tire actually came off the wheel. Yeah, well, well, I won. Six laps later. Okay, yeah, yeah, Alex, 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 yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, four laps later. Time penalty. Oh. Another four laps later. Which, is anyone gonna finish this race? What? One lap later. Five seconds later. So yes, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am back once again. I took a little bit of a break, definitely needed it, but we're back. We're better than ever and I've got more videos being made for you guys to watch and enjoy. So for this week's video, I'm going to be doing a bit of a, I guess you could call it a time capsule video. Just for everyone, 20, 30, 40 years in the future from now, if you're watching this video, this is just gonna kind of explain to you what the hell's going on right now because you're probably looking at a lot of videos and pictures of this season in particular and asking, what happened? So this video is for you people in the future to just know what happened in the 2020 season. Let's get into it. So you're probably wondering what caused all of this kind of, I guess you could say, chaos to happen. You're probably learning about it in your history books right now, but I have to be very light with how I address it because I don't want my bosses at YouTube to get mad at me. But basically, uh, lots of people got kind of really sick. So that's why all these weird things are going on. So also, if you're in the future right now, can you just let me know, is Hamilton still like really good in winning? Is he now like a cyborg or something just winning every single race? Because like, I really want to know when that's going to end. So just, I guess, comment down below and let me know. But yeah, just let me know, please. So first and foremost, the calendar. This might be the most unpredictable, weird, crazy season of Formula One that has happened and ever will happen because all these things happened and all the races had to get canceled. So Formula One and the FAA had to kind of scramble together and get a season, which is why you're seeing these double races. So for the first time in Formula One history in 2020, you're seeing actually two races at the same track weekends after each other, which has never happened before. Also, why are we calling them different races when they're at the same track? They're calling it the first ever Styrian Grand Prix. No, it's not. It's the same track, just Anyways, basically what's happening is they're having to announce tracks on the calendar as they can, as places in the world start to open up and governments allow them to open their tracks and have a race because it's a lot of things that go into a Formula One Grand Prix weekend and lots of people have to come in. And as of this moment, I'm recording this on July 12th of 2020. We have 10 races, which is not sufficient for a world championship because you actually need, I think, I think it's 15 races in three separate continents. So as of right now, we have two continents and 10 races. So we're looking to get a world championship in by the end of the season. But the fact that we're currently racing without knowing what the rest of the season holds, not knowing how many races we're going to get, is extremely exciting and unpredictable because every race just and every podium every point means so much and I don't think there's going to be a season in Formula One history again where we're going to have this level of unpredictability with the calendar and it's it's kind of cool if you ask me and really I think we should start doing this from now on is just slowly announce the calendar do this for the rest of Formula One history just have some fun with it but it's never going to happen but it'd be super cool 
you're also seeing a lot of people probably wearing these things when you're watching interviews and podiums and anytime the drivers or team personnel are on TV, they're wearing a face mask because it's the easiest way basically to stop this whole virus thing from spreading around. But you're going to find it very hard to hear the drivers when they're talking into the microphone, as you can tell right now. And that leads into the media. The media are, have to be six feet apart away from the drivers and Drivers are like trying to listen and hear and they can't hear the media people asking the questions. The media people are on the TV. Everyone's six feet apart. Everything looks super weird, but just know that it's very necessary and reasonable for them to be doing that. So, yeah, this this part is really annoying because you can't you can't hear people. Okay, that's, that's, that's that bit done for now. Next up, we have the testing procedures that have to be done. So if, you, if you're watching this in the future and they haven't taught you this, in school yet, the tests for this thing that we have are extremely invasive and painful. I'm lucky enough, oh gosh, knock on wood, to have never gotten one so far, but uh, basically it's this super long thing they have to stick all the way to the back of your nose, up your nose into the back of your ear to get a test done, where everyone has to get two tests done before they leave for the track, uh, two tests when they get there, and then every three days after that. So really there should be like an, an, an extra level of respect for the drivers from this year for even committing to doing that because trust me it does not look very comfortable to have to do so kudos to all the team personnel and drivers for allowing these things to be stuck up their noses. The other glaring thing you're going to notice while you're watching highlights from races from this year is there's just no one there. Basically lots any government in the world right now is not allowing large gatherings of people which obviously means we can't have fans in the grandstand so it's kind of an eerie atmosphere with the lack of any cheering or anything like that but you'll notice there are these lights and stuff in the grandstands lighting up with driver's name and number what what that's doing I, I don't know I guess the drivers are just seeing their number while they're driving the they can't they, yeah so that part's kind of weird I, I don't have an answer on that one for you I'm sorry and then probably the hardest thing to do in these times are the podium celebrations because you're taking drivers and a constructor person from each team and putting them in a close proximity to each other which is technically not supposed to happen but again they all have the masks on so it's fine but so the, the podiums haven't been greatly affected but the only different thing are these things that it's a robot that is driving the trophy over to the drivers so they can grab it so there's no interaction if that's not the most 2020 thing i've seen so far in this crazy messed up year I don't know what it is. I think it's super hilarious and it's going to age so well because 30 years from now we're going to look back on that and be like, oh yeah, that that was a thing that happened back then. So depending on how this season actually affects the Scuderia Ferrari, but why are Ferrari sucking so much? That is a big question, especially if in the future they're dominant. Basically, they had an issue with the fuel intake on the engine or something like that. I'm not too sure. Uh, last season, and the FIA just kindly asked them to stop doing that because it was giving them a huge performance boost in a straight line. So basically, they had to stop doing that. And since the whole, you know, thing happened and no one could work on the cars or provide any upgrades before the season, they had to show up to this... I guess you could call it silly season, with a really crappy and bad car. Leclerc somehow got a podium in the first Austrian Grand Prix, but then they are just clearly behind in probably the fifth best car on the grid right now. And they're looking really bad and really unreliable and just not quick. So if you're looking back on this and wondering what happened to Ferrari, that's basically in a very, you know, quick way what happened to them. And it's kind of funny to watch, but yeah, the memes are good. Do you have memes in the future? I, that's another thing I want to know. Just, again, comment down below. Memes? Still a thing? I don't know. So yeah, I guess those are kind of the basic things that are out of the water you need to understand for, as to what happened this season. Again, if you're watching any highlights or clips from this year, that is the reason as to why they look so weird and so out of place. I also hope in the future, wherever, whenever you are watching this right now, there's no asterisks on whoever wins the title this year because they really shouldn't have one. I think personally, at least in the past few decades, this is the hardest championship to have to win, the mental state these guys have to be in to go into a race, not knowing how many races they have left in the season is a completely difficult thing to do and I don't think that should be looked past upon. So when Lewis Hamilton probably inevitably wins another title, mark this as probably the toughest one he's had to win to date. Thank you so much guys for watching. Y'all in the future, I hope you're doing well. I hope 
we're still here and i hope someone actually is watching this in the future but yeah thanks again guys for watching don't forget to lick the stamp send that subscribe button down below comment what you think of this crazy weird season don't miss the apex and i'll catch you in the next one peace